Today we're going to cover the drafting workbench. So this is what your assignment is going to look like. But before I start the lecture, I want to go back to the beginning. Here's an example of a student report card from a few years back. So uh, I'm going to send you a report card in the next few weeks showing you your total score. And here's the grade scale for an A, B, C, or D. And all assignments will be due at the end of the semester. It's not the same date as they sit here for us. Okay, so everything will be due at the end of the semester. Okay, so, so far we worked on the angle bracket, the clamp assembly, the motor base assembly. Here's an extra credit ass assignment, the lifting assembly. And for uh, today's assignment, you're going to be working on uh, the drafting workbench. Our next lecture will cover uh, FTNA, functional tolerancing and annotation, using model-based definition. So this is what we use instead of uh, a lot of large companies use this, attaching dimensions and text onto the 3D model instead of creating a drawing. And finally, our last class session, we will cover digital mockup, where we do a clash analysis. We check to see if any parts are hitting uh, each other, and to correct the mis the mistake. This is very common, especially in automotive, where you do a section cut in 3D to analyze to see if any parts are hitting each other, like electrical hitting interior, or even carpet hitting the. Uh, or clashing with the structural part of the vehicle or the interior parts of the vehicle, for example. You want to make sure things are not clashing. Okay, so at the end we'll learn how to generate a clash report. All right, so we're going to go back to the drafting workbench or drafting lecture. Okay, so you are to create a drawing like this one. Here's an example from uh, one of my old students. Okay, so you're going to create a title block and border, parts list, an exploded view, a top assembly, sub assemblies, and you're going to create the detailed drawings of the ind individual parts, the base plate, the bracket, the support, the shaft, and the knuckle. We do not make drawings of the hardware, the bolts, nuts, and washers. Before internet, before 3D modeling, we would have to provide a final page listing all the specifications for the bolts, nuts, washers, and uh, loose hardware. Nowadays we don't, since everything can be ordered online, either through McMaster, Carlane, and other websites, they follow the, the specifications set by the uh, ANSI standards or ASME standards, the American standards, and we can just order them using their part number. And when we order the part, it lists all the specifications it meets, the American standards and also military standards. All right, so let's take a look at uh, some other examples from uh, other students. Okay, so I'm going to show you examples from other uh, students on their drafting assignment. I recommend that you use a D size sheet that's 22 by 34 inches. If you want to use a B, 11 by 17, uh, go for it. It's just it's going to be a little bit tighter on the sheet size. And once again, you do not create drawings for the hardware, bolts, nuts, washers, etc. Okay, so once again, uh, here are examples. Here's what something turned in a few years back. If you want to follow, this is your example. Okay, so generate a title block, generate a bill of material, which we'll go over in the lecture. Exploded view with balloons, calling out each part. We have an assembly, sub-assemblies, and details. I'm not going to be picky when it comes to the grading. I'm not going to check to see if you got every single dimension. I'm not going to check to see if you uh, labeled everything correctly. What I want to see is that you use the commands in the drafting workbench. I want to see that you know how to generate a title block and border, a bill of material parts list, how to create an exploded view, assembly views, how to generate front views, side views, bottom views, etc., and isometric views. Okay, so here's more examples. 
So I'm going to email you this uh, PDF file of, of uh, examples from previous students that you can follow. If you want to follow one of them or a combination, or if you want to do your own thing, you're welcome to. And again, uh, the drafting assignment is one of those where I'm not picky when it comes to the grading. I just glanced to see that you generated your your views, your isometric views, exploded views, your parts list or bill of material, and the detail views, and that you generated dimensions. I'm not going to check to see if you if you missed a dimension or if you misspelled a word. I'm just going to quickly glance at it for uh, maybe 10 seconds. All right, looks like this student completed the entire assignment, full credit, and move on to the next student to grade. All right, so once again, I'm going to email you this PDF file with the uh, previous uh, student examples. All right, so let's move on to the lecture. Okay, so dra drafting workbench lecture three. Okay, so you should already be familiar with the drafting workbench from CAT 31. We're just going to review some of the uh, concepts you did learn in CAT 31 and do some more uh, advanced concepts in the drafting workbench. Okay, so quick review. If you want to go into the drafting work workbench, go to Start, Mechanical Design, and click on the drafting workbench. Looks like a little workbench with the gear on top. Okay, so when you start a drawing, it's going to follow some standard, whether it's an ANSI, American National Standards Institute, or ASME, American Society of Mechanical Engineers, or an ISO standard, the International Standards Organization, or even a Japanese standard, the JIS standards. And you're going to pick a sheet size. You're going to discourage uh, using, a, if I haven't so, I, I'm discouraging you from using a A size. A size is 8.5 by 11. I rarely used A size. I typically use B, 11 by 17, or D, which is uh, 22 by 34. And if I need a larger size, then I'll move up to a larger size. Okay, so once the window pop well, this window pops up, you can modify, you can click on modify to change the standard or the sheet size. I just hit OK and I manually change the sheet size. All right, so let's go on to the next slide. So let me walk you through how to get into the, how to create a new drawing and how to change the properties of your sheet. Okay, you just simply right click on the sheet, properties, and you can change the sheet size. Okay, so let me walk you through that. Okay, so this is the part we're gonna make, be making a, a, some uh, views from. Okay, so if I'm ready to create a drawing for this part, I'll go to Start, Mechanical Design, Drafting. Okay, and I'm just gonna instead of hit instead of clicking Modify, you know, I'll just go ahead and click Modify, just to show you that you can change the standard. Do you want to use ANSI American Standards, ASME American Standards, ISO International Standards? or the JIS standards, which is, which is the Japanese standards. And then you can pick what sheet size you want to use. So you can do it from here if you like. Or you can simply hit OK and change it in the properties. Either way will work. Okay, I'm going to hit OK. And I'll just have it generate a sheet. So this is sheet 1. So typically I'll do it from here. If I want to change the sheet size, I'll just right click properties. Okay, and, some, and then from here you can change the sheet size. One thing you cannot do is change the standard. But from here you can change the sheet size. Typically I'll use B size or D. If I'm dealing with something, uh, large assemblies like an aerospace, like working on a fuselage for example, I'll jump up to an E or even an F size, larger size. And uh, we have also a J size, which is a 36 by, you can change the length. So I've used J size for electrical wiring, for uh, for uh, EV, for electric vehicles. Uh, there's a lot of wiring, obviously, in electrical vehicles. And some of the harnesses, 
that we modeled were as long as 15 feet long. So we had to customize our own sheet size, 36 inches by 15 feet, just so that we can draw our wire harness and the flat linearly at full scale, at actual size. So it's just easier to manufacture. Okay, also this is where you change your angle projections. So most American companies follow third angle projection. So when you project from a front view to create your side view, top view, this case we're going to be using, uh, for this class we'll be using third angle. If you want to use first angle, go for it. So quite a few uh, other countries use first angle projection. Okay, so I'll leave it at B size. For this part, once I go into the assemblies, I'll go, I'll jump up to a D size. So I'll stay in B size, okay. So this is 22 by 34. All right, so if I want to create a front view of my part, I can go to front view, right? Go to front view. Then I go to my part and click on any uh, flat surface or any plane. Okay, so you should be familiar with the compass here. This is to rotate, right? So you can use the arrows to rotate. There's also a rotation option here where you can control. There's also this little green uh, circle here that you can just rotate about. You can also change the increments of how much you can rotate by by right clicking. Okay, I'll just leave it the way it is. I'm going to deviate a little bit from the lecture notes, but I'll call this my front view. And I'll just click in space to generate or click on the center blue button here to generate my view. I'll just click in space so I can generate the view. There it is. Okay, so let's go back to the lecture notes. Okay, so we already talked about right clicking on a sheet and how to change your sheet size or angle projection. Okay, if you want to view both your model and your drawing at the same time, side by side, you can go to window, tile vertically. Okay, so if you want to see both windows at the same time. Okay, so currently I'm in the drafting workbench. Let me go over to the 3D model. Okay, so if I wanted to see both the 3D model and the, and the drawing side by side, I can go to Window, Vertical. Okay, so there it is. Comes in handy. So it's easy to go back and forth if you're going to generate more views, which we'll do in a few minutes. Okay, so that is once again Window, Tile, Vertically. Okay, so we already generated our front view. We're going to go ahead and generate an isometric view and I already went over the compass right you can use the compass to rotate to flip you can also use the green button to rotate it okay before we create our isometric view I want to go over this here's an axis this is the axis of our part so if we go back to our 3D model, we'll see that our axis is here. And I prefer to turn this off. You can go to Tools Options, Drafting Workbench, and go to the General tab and turn this off. I typically will have it off. So you can uncheck this and this will go away, your axis for your part for the 3D model. Okay, so let me demonstrate that real quick. I'm going to quickly model another part. So it's just warning me that it's going to create a new uh, window session for a brand new part. Oh, it just took me back to this part. 
I got to start again. So I'm already in part design, so it should recognize that I want to create a new part since I'm already in part design over here on the right. Click it. Yep. So it recognizes that I want to create a new part if I go to the same workbench, the part design. Okay, so I'm going to model something real simple. But I'm going to model it away from my axis. Now you may not see an axis, but it's where your X, Y, Z uh, planes intersect. That's where your, or I should say your origin is at, right? Okay, so I'm going to model something away from the axis. Way far away. So a good example is in aerospace, this would be towards the front of the aircraft, like maybe the nose or the fuselage. And then back here, you'll have the, the rudder, right? So typically, you'll, or I should say every time, the rudder is going to be way far away from the origin of the aircraft coordinate system. So again, the fuselage nose would be somewhere here. And way out there will be the rudder of the aircraft at the tail section of the aircraft. Okay, so just to save time, I'm not going to constrain the sketch. I'll create a pad real quick. Doesn't matter what. What thickness? Okay. And watch, I'm going to bring in this view. Okay, so let's go back to uh, drafting. And I'll just create a view and I'll delete it in a, in a few minutes just to uh, get the point across about this axis. So currently I have it off, it's not showing. I'll turn it back on in a few uh, seconds. All right, so let's go ahead and generate a new view. So front view of this rudder I just modeled up real quick. Click on any planar surface or plane to generate the view. Okay, and click in space. All right, so let me go ahead and maximize my window here. Okay, so currently we don't see that axis. I modeled the part larger than what I wanted, but let's go ahead and get this point across here. Okay, so you don't see an axis. Let's go back. So mine is currently off. Let me go ahead and turn it on. Okay, so I'm gonna go to Tools Options. And I'm going to go to the mechanical design, open up that branch, go to drafting, go to general. Notice mine is currently off. Let me go ahead and turn it back on. Hit OK. And I want you to notice there's the axis. So this gets annoying when you're working on a component, part of, the, of an aircraft, and you have that axis on. You're going to have these large, long, frames and it's going to show up on the on the view that it's currently active so see how this is red this is currently active if i go to my other view and i double click it now you're going to see the axis show up on this one so it only shows up on the view that's currently active now you can see this is no longer active if i double click on the frame on this one it'll be the active view and it'll show the axis. By the way, you can also activate by double clicking here on the tree. So if I wanted to go back to the other one, double click. And now the this view will be active. Oh, let's double click again. There it is. Okay, so again, you can double click from here if you want to make the other view active. Okay, so this gets annoying. So one thing you can do is just turn it off. Go to Tools Options once again. Tools options, and you can turn off that axis. Hey, I don't want to see that little blue axis. Turn it off and OK. OK, so let me go ahead and delete this. All right, another thing I wanted to get across is also not only does the part have an axis, so does the sheet. So let's say I wanted to copy this text onto the sheet. So currently, the text is part of this view frame. As you can see, if I as I move this view frame, the text will move with it. Okay, so let's say I wanted to put text on the sheet. 
Okay, so first I'm going to double click on the sheet. Double click. And now the sheet is the one that's active. Let me click in space to deselect. Notice how the sheet here is blue now in the tree. So that's active, not the view. Okay, so I'm going to take this text, right click copy, and I'm going to paste it onto the sheet. Now the question is, where is it going to land? Is it going to land here? It's going to land off the sheet. Let's find out. I'm going to right click on the sheet and paste that text. So I'm copying the text and I'm going to paste it onto the sheet. Where's it going to land? Bam, it lands down here. Now how come it didn't land in the same location as it is here? And the reason is it's going to land with respect to the axis of the sheet. So for the part here, the axis is right here. And the text, here it is with respect to the axis. Well, it's going to do the same thing for the sheet. Here's the axis or the origin of the sheet is at this corner. And the text is going to land in the same location with respect to its axis, just as it was here with respect to the axis of the part. Okay, so keep that in mind. The sheet has its own axis. Let me go ahead and delete this. Let's use the delete button on the keyboard. All right, so let's continue on. All right, so let's go ahead and create an isometric view. Okay, so I'm going to go to isometric view. Go to my part. All right, so before you click on any uh, plane or planar surface to generate your view, first position it. If you want this as your ISO view, position it. And then you click on a flat surface or a plane. Let me follow the ISO here, ISO view orientation here. There it is. And I'll click on a planar surface or a plane. Either one will generate my view. All right, click on the center button or click in space to generate the view. And typically you'll place your ISO view most of the time on the upper right corner or wherever you have space available. Okay, so that's ISO view. Okay, so let's say you wanted to change properties on one of your views. Let's say you wanted to show center lines, axes, hidden lines. Okay, so all you have to do is right click on that view on the tree or on the frame, right click properties, and you can have center lines, axes, hidden lines uh, generated or be generated. Okay, so I can right click on the frame or here, right click on the front view, go to properties. And if you want to generate hidden lines, turn on hidden lines. You want to turn off fillets. Typically, you don't want to show fillets, the round tangency fillet lines. I want to see center lines and axes. By the way, also, if you want to lock a view, let's say you're finished creating your drawing, your dimensions, and for some reason you want to lock this view so you don't uh, later on mistakenly delete something or alter something, you can always lock the view here. All right, so I'm going to hit apply and keep your eye on the view. Three, two, one, apply, and it's going to generate center lines, hidden lines, axes, axes, as you can see. And hit OK. Okay, so as you can see, it generated hidden lines. That's a hidden line. We have an axis line axis line and center marks and by the way if you want to alter the size of a let's say the center mark you can click on it and you can use these grips to change the length if you just want to change only one you can hold on to the control key if you just want to change one so currently I'm holding on to the control button on the keyboard if you just want to change one at a time okay so you do have that option if you let go of the control button, then it's going to move all of them at once. Okay, so, all right, let's continue on with the lecture. 
Okay, so once again, you can uh, turn on your hidden lines, center lines, axes. Typically, you'll turn off those fillet tangency lines. Also, if you want to change the scale, if you want your view to be larger or smaller, you can change the scale here by inputting either fractions, ratios, or decimals. Okay, so you can change the size of your view here in scale. Actually, you know what? Let's go ahead and do that. Let's say I wanted to change this to a larger size. Right click on the frame, properties. If you want to make it double the size, you can either go two to one, two divided by one, or simply the decimal. Two divided by one is just two. And apply, and it'll change it to a larger size. If you want half size, you can do one to two, one divided by two, or the decimal, 0 0.5. 0 0.5 is half. Apply in three, two, one, apply. And there it is. Okay, I'll go ahead and leave it as a scale one, full size. If you can fit it there at full size, it's as preferred uh, actual size, but sometimes you want to increase the size or make it smaller so you can fit it inside your sheet. All right, so move on okay so if you want to create a if you want to add more sheets you can go to insert drawing sheet if you want to add another sheet now in my case I don't need a second sheet but let me go ahead and uh, add one anyway so you can either click the button here so here's the icon to insert a new sheet or you can go to insert drawing sheets and new and it'll generate a second sheet all right let me hit undo you can either hit control z oh i guess you cannot undo a second sheet let me go ahead and delete it it's like are you sure you want to do this yes and okay so sheet number two is gone all right so Let's go back to the lecture notes. Okay, now let's do a projection view. Okay, so if you want to generate a side view, top view, obviously I'm not following the same views as in the lecture here, on the lecture notes. I chose this as my front view, but rotated 180. Okay, so uh, typically your front view should be the view that gives you the most information. Okay, so. So if I want to generate a side view and a top view off of this reference view, first you need to uh, make it red, double click, make the frame red, or you can double click here on the tree. All right, so let's go ahead and project, project. So again, it's going to project off of the view that's active, which the one that's red. And when I project, it's also going to use the same settings here of showing hidden lines, center lines, etc. Okay, now let's go to the generate a top view. Okay, so we're going to project once again off of the view that's active, the one that's red. And it will also create center lines, hidden lines, axes, right? It'll follow the same settings as your reference view. All right, so we can go ahead and... Uh, center it all right let's move on to the notes okay now let's say we wanted to do a section view okay so section view okay so let's say I wanted to show a section view cutting right through the middle of this part first you got to activate the part activate it now we don't need a section view for this part. The three views is more than enough to show all the features of the part. But let's say you wanted to generate a section view to show what's inside the view or the, the solid, I should say. Okay, so we're gonna do a section view. Okay, so click on it. Okay, so make sure it's red. As you can see, it's red. 
Okay, let me zoom in. Okay, so I want to go right down the middle. So I'm going to track that center of the hole, or that center point of the hole. Okay, go slightly beyond. Then I'm going to click. I'm going to cut down the middle. And you need to double click to generate. Okay, so if you just simply click, it's not going to gener generate the section view. You need to double click. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and double click. So you have to double click to generate the section view, as you can see. And there it is. Section views, uh, hidden lines are not allowed in a section view, but center lines and axes are. Okay. So that's a section of view. If you uh, need to make changes, you can always double click on your uh, cutting line or cutting plane. You can always double click on it. If you want to extend it or shorten it, you can do that. All right, let's move on to the next one. And let's do a, an auxiliary view. Okay, so I'm gonna open up a different part for this one. Now let me go ahead and insert a new sheet. This is uh, obviously, a, I wanna create a second part here on a second sheet, but let's go ahead and uh, insert a new sheet. Okay, so notice it generated the second the second sheet as sheet three. It recognized that we used sheet two before, the one that we deleted previously. It's okay, you can always right click properties and change the name. You can right click properties and say, hey, I'm gonna call this sheet two. So since Katia recognized that we previously had a sheet two, it generated a sheet three. So it was thinking I didn't wanna duplicate a sheet two. That's okay, we can go ahead and change it here and hit okay. All right, by the way, uh, before I do a, an auxiliary view, you can always reorder the sheets, by the way. So if you have a bunch of sheets and you need to reorder them, you can always right click, go to reorder, and you can only reorder and drop it below an existing sheet, okay? so. All you have to do is hover over the sheet you want it to be uh, placed afterwards, okay? I'll just go ahead and hit escape. I just wanted to show you that's how you reorder. Once again, just simply right click. So if I wanted to place the sheet below sheet, sheet one below sheet two, I can just right click, reorder, and click on the sheet that I wanted to go after. Click on it and see it reordered. Now we have sheet two and then sheet one. Okay, let me do it over again. I want to reorder sheet two so it's second instead of first. Right click, reorder, and click on the sheet you want it to come right after. Click, and it reorders it. All right, comes in handy. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and open up this part, which has uh, an angled surface. Okay, as you can see, okay, typically when you have a part like this, you have to create an auxiliary view. All right, so let's go ahead and generate a front view for this part. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, create a front view. And I'm gonna go to this part that I just opened up. This happens to be one of the parts that I use for AutoCAD, CAD 5. Okay, so let's create our front view. Okay, click in space to generate the view. Okay, so first make sure it's red, which it is. The frame is red. If it's not, double click on it, turn it red, it's active. Okay, so if we're going to do an auxiliary view, a view looking down the hole or normal to the surface. Okay, so, oh, I'm in the wrong one. Okay, so this is auxiliary view. Okay, an auxiliary view is a view other than a 
right side view or top view or anything projected at a 90 degree angle. So top, low, right side, left side are all projected at a 90 degree angle. In other words, vertically or horizontally. So auxiliary view, we're going to go other than vertical or horizontal. Auxiliary view. Okay, so just guesstimate where you want your, your line of rotation. I'm going to click. Then I want to be parallel to this one. So I'm going to track it, see if it tracks. And there it is. It, it tracks. See how it's giving me parallelism? I can always right click and say, hey, I want to go parallel to that line. So I can always right click, go parallel to it. And when you're ready to generate your auxiliary auxiliary view, double click, double click. And it'll generate that auxiliary view. All right. Let's go back to sheet one. Okay, so that was auxiliary view. Okay, so if you want to do a detail, a detail view, instead of using this as an example, I'll use, you know, I'll go back and use uh, the second part here. So if I wanted to do a detail view of, let's say, the slot, let's say, I wanted to dimension the slot, but the dimensions are just way too tight for this small slot. Hey, I can make my detail view first. Double click on the frame. Make sure it turns red. There it is. I click in space to deselect. There it is. So I can now create a detail view. Let's say I wanted a detail view of this slot so I can dimension it. Okay, click to generate the portion you want to create here and then click in space and the default is it'll double the size okay so I want you to notice your detail view will always be double the size of your reference view you can always change the size if you want to make it larger so again the default is to make it twice the size of your reference view hey I'll make it let's say four times if I need to really zoom in okay so I made it four times the size of the reference view and I, I can go ahead and dimension it and again this is to avoid crowding dimensions in the auxiliary view okay so again sometimes you need detail views zoom into a view as a tiny feature like this slot this rectangular slot okay Okay, printing. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about printing. I could have saved this towards the end, but might as well talk about it now. Printing is one of the most frustrating things in not only Katia, but any other software. You have to uh, look, at, look at the settings, what sheet size, what type of printer are you using? Are you using an inkjet printer? Are you using a plotter? These large plotters that you see in, a, in a architecture offices, for example, or large aerospace companies. Sometimes the smaller uh, companies uh, cannot afford to buy a large plotter. So they'll go with the inkjet printer. All right, so when it comes to printing, here's uh, your sheet, and it's in the wrong orientation with respect to the way it's going to print. So sometimes you have to rotate it. This is to rotate. You can do a no fitting, so it's 100%. You can do a fit to page or you can do your own scale. You can center it. So this center will center with respect to the sheet. Okay. If you want to change the sheet size, you go to page setup. Okay. So let's go ahead and uh, do a print. So it all depends on what you have access to at your, at the, whether it's in the computer lab or at, at your office or at home. What, uh, what are you going to use to print with? an inkjet, a plotter, depending on what I, on what you have access to it, the settings will be a little different. Okay, so let me go to sheet one. Let's say I wanted to do a print. So I'm going to go to printer setup. Oh, my mistake. File print, my mistake, file print.
Okay, so notice I have the wrong orientation. So if I want to rotate it, 90 degrees, there it is, it rotates it. If I want, hey, no fitting, 100%, like, whoa, yeah, the sheet is too small if you want to print this at full scale. So currently my sheet size, most likely it's at 8.5 by 11. So I can go to page setup and say, hey, instead of a letter, 8.5 by 11, I want to go up to a... B size okay so this is the Japanese standard B size or maybe I could be able to go to legal I think legal is eight and a half by 11 my mistake 11 by 17 hit okay oh not exactly so let me go back to page setup so again this depending on what you're hooked up to as far as printers it'll limit you as to what you can pick on sizes if you were uh, connected to a plotter, these large plotters, you would have an A size, B size, C size, D size option. So I'll go to B size Japanese standards. Okay, hopefully that's 11 by 17. Nope, it's still too large. Let's see. Fit into page. That's at 83%. No fitting. All right, so in this case, I would have to say fit into page so I can be able to print. Then I can always hit preview. And it's giving me a preview of what it's going to print. Okay, so uh, we can spend uh, quite a bit of time going over printing. Uh, I just want uh, you to be aware that it can be a headache when you're first learning how to print in Katia, whether it's in the computer lab, at home, or at work. And if you're going to be uh, printing uh, multiple pages at one time, you can go to multi-documents multi and say, hey, I want to print all of them. And hit preview. And here I can go to sheet one, sheet two, right? And you can print one at a time. If you like, you can click printer, then go to the next one and hit print. Or you can just simply hit OK and it'll print all the sheets. And that's as far as I'm going to go with printing. Just a warning, it's, it can be frustrating at first when you're first print, printing, and that's with any software, AutoCAD, CATIA, SOLIDWORKS, etc. All right, so if you want to add your own center marks, you do have this icon. If CATIA didn't automatically generate center marks for you when you change your options, you can always create your own center marks with this icon. Okay, so let's say for example, it did not generate the center mark. I'm going to go ahead and, by the way, you can also hide items. Let's say instead of delete, deleting this item, let's say I wanted to just hide it. Let's say I wasn't sure if I wanted the center mark. And instead of deleting, you can hide it. You can go to hide. There it is. I hid that center mark. You can always click on the no show. So here we can swap to no show. You can always call it back. There it is, the center mark. It's in the hidden layer. Okay, so let's say it didn't generate a center mark. So we do have that option, right? So let me go ahead and get that toolbar. Here it is. And I can click center mark and click on an arc or circle and it'll generate my center mark. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on to the next topic or the next slide. All right, so let's talk about dimensions. Now, uh, Katia, depending on, uh, I guess, which, if you have the uh, English version or uh, French version, depending on which when you download a CATIA, if you uh, downloaded American, uh, US, or let's say uh, French, or let's say uh, Mandarin, Chinese, depending on what language you download the software, most likely your uh, your CATIA at home is going to, and also the computer lab here on campus, it's going to give you your dimensions in feet, inches. Now, when you go work for a company, everything will already be set up. You'll have a 
drawing template for millimeters and one for inches. 99.9% .9 of the time, if you're working in automotive or, or aerospace, you'll be working in either inches or millimeters. You'll be working in feet inches if you're working in architecture. Okay, so for us it's mechanical, it's always gonna be millimeters, which is the first choice, or the third choice here is inches. Again, most likely your computer, your CATIA at home will default to feet inches. Okay, so let's throw in some dimensions. Okay, I'm just gonna randomly throw in some dimensions. Okay, so to dimension, look for this one. You can go to auto dimension here. You still have to click on the elements, or you can go the long way if you wanna do a linear dimension, angular, radius, diameter. I prefer to go the long way. Some of you are going to prefer to just use the simple uh, icon here, we'll, which it'll auto-detect if it's an arc for a radius, a circle for diameter, or a length if it's a linear length. Okay, so I'll just use the simple version here. Okay, I'm going to just throw in some dimensions. Okay, let's say I wanted an overall length. And you can already see it's giving me uh, these awkward uh, dimensions and again it's giving me uh, dimensions in feet inches which I don't want so uh, I'm gonna recommend that uh, you can either leave it alone if you like with these units but I'm gonna recommend you wait till the very end to uh, change your uh, your dimensions So I'll just throw in a few dimensions. I'm not going to do all of them because of time. And let me go ahead and throw in one more for diameter. Okay, so uh, once you throw in your dimensions and, hey, you don't like these dimensions, I don't want feet inches, I want millimeters, or I want inches, how do you do that? So you can change it one at a time if you like, which is the long way. You can go click. And the dimension you want to alter and you can right click properties you can right click properties this is one option and let's see I'm gonna look for units here oh here it is on the first tab the value tab instead of feet inches hey I want millimeters and hit apply and keep an eye on your screen three two one apply so if you want millimeters, there it is, millimeters. If you want to change decimal places, you can do it here in precision. If you want to go to inches, hey, I want inches, go to the third option, inches, and apply. Okay, so this is 2.25 inches. Okay, so this is the long way of doing it by, by doing one at a time. By the way, you can also change it from up here. You can select. The dimension which I already have one selected and you can change it from here millimeters up oh, want to go to inches okay so in this case I want to go to inches on your assignment it'll I think it'll be millimeters so what you can do is imagine you're you have already dimensioned all the views you're ready to change your dimensions to inches in this case okay so we're gonna go to the drop down here but first select everything I'm just gonna window select everything so you can see everything's been selected. Then I'm gonna go here to the drop down and say, hey, I want inches. Three, two, one inches. And there it is, it gives me inches. Okay, by the way, uh, if you wanna add a little leader in front of your text, you can always click on the dimension. And you can either go to properties or go here to add a little this tiny leader here. There it is, just looks better. Same thing with this one. Okay, I wanna add a leader in front of it. And I can use this manipulator to extend it. So you can use manipulators to extend. Also, if you wanna add text, you need to click on these red triangles. If you don't see these red triangles, I'm gonna show you in a later slide how to turn on all these manipulators. So let's say we had two holes with the same diameter. I can always click on this red triangle and type in 2x, 2 capital X, and OK. OK, 
Okay, so that's how you add text. Just click on the red triangles. If I wanted to remove the double arrow and just go down to one arrow, so in this case I don't need two arrows, arrowheads. Okay, so I'm going to go to right-click properties and I'm going to turn off one of them. So right-click properties on the dimension. And let me look for the arrows. Let's see, tolerance. Uh, if you want to add a tolerance, a plus or minus tolerance, this is where you go for tolerance. So here are my arrowheads. So I'm going to turn off the second arrowhead and hit apply. Okay, so keep an eye on the arrowheads, apply, and it will remove one of them. Okay, there it is, removed it. Removed it. If you want to add a tolerance, let's go back to tolerance. So if you want to add a plus or minus tolerance, you can do it here. Okay, I want to add a 0.1 tolerance in each direction. Apply, keep an eye on the dimension. Notice it added a tolerance. Oh, I forgot a minus. I forgot to put a minus and apply. So if you want to add a tolerance, hey, half inch plus or minus 0 0.10, for example, just go here and add a tolerance. Okay. Or if you want to add a, uh, a max and minimum tolerance, you can also do that from here. Or I can just go back and remove the tolerance, apply, and that'll remove it. All right. So another thing that you have here, also if you want to add or remove the lead, that little tiny lead we added in front of the text, you can do it from here. Also sometimes you want to remove extensions. On this one it doesn't have extensions, but you can also remove extension lines. You can do it from here, remove extension lines. If you want to add text below, so if you wanted to add information with respect to this scallop here, you can add more text if you like. You can do it here, below, top, front, or behind. Instead of using the red uh, triangles that I showed earlier, you can do it from here. Also, if you want to add symbols, there it is. So you can always click in the window where you want to add the symbol. It already has a diameter symbol on ours, right? You can add symbols here. Depth, counterboard, countersunk, etc. You can do it from here. Okay, if you want to change the font, typically you don't change the font because it's following a standard. In this case, it's following in a, I believe it was an ANSI American standard. And if you wanted to add a frame, like a basic frame, or uh, to make it a basic dimension, if you wanted to add GDNT, if you were using GDNT tolerances, if you wanted to add a frame around it, you can do it from here. Okay, I want to add a frame. Apply. Okay, this is something you would see in a GDNT class. It's going to add a frame around my text. For us, we wouldn't use it here. Just wanted to show you how to apply it. Okay, so, and the others are not that important. The other tabs, that's if you want to add color, graphic colors, for example. All right, so let's move on to the next slide. Okay, so once again, you can individually change each uh, dimension. You can change the units by going to the value tab. So first you right-click properties, go to the value tab, change your, your units, inches, feet, millimeters, and decimal places. You can go to precision for decimal places. All right, now manipulators. So if you wanted to turn on these manipulators, these little white uh, squares and the white arrow, it's hard to see here, and the red triangles, you have to go into Tools Options, go to Drafting, Manipulators, and you want to turn all these on. Okay, so after you create your dimension, all these manipulators will be available to you if you checked all these on. If you turn these on, the manipulators will show up as you're creating the dimension. Uh, so we don't have, need to uh, have these on as you're creating the dimension. We'll just wait after the dimension is created. Just turn these on so it'll give me access to all these manipulators. Okay, so again, if you want to be able to 
use these manipulators. As you can see, if you want to hit, if you hit the control key, it'll only move one. If you let go of the control key, it'll move both. As you can see. Okay, so we have these manipulators, and also if you want to add text, you have the red triangle. So you have, all you simply have to do is go to Tools Options and turn on those manipulators. Okay, so we're going to go over to the Mechanical Design Drafting and go to manipulators there's manipulators and it most likely in your case these are going to be off so mine are all on okay and hit ok and it'll turn on the manipulators okay back to the lecture let's go to the next slide okay and i'm going to mention this on the assignment video your text is going to snap to a grid Okay, so your drawing has a grid, and if you don't want it to snap, you got to turn these off. Okay, so you go back to the Drafting Tools Options, Drafting, and anytime you move text or move a view, it's going to snap. So you want to turn these off. So there's this one here under Dimensions. Look for the arrow, the Move arrow, and turn off Snap. And there's also another one under annotation and dress up also when you're moving text or maybe a, a view or I should say a bill of material table for example it's going to snap to the grid in the background of the drawing so you may want to turn this off if it's on and you want to leave it on but you want a freedom to move without snapping you can always hold on to the shift key as you're moving something like text or dimension all right so so mine is currently off. Let me show you the grid. There it is. So there's a grid. Uh, I can tell you about half of the draft or drafters or engineers or designers prefer to have the grid on. I'm one of those that like to have the grid on. Others dislike this grid. It's it just seems like it's too crowded here on the screen. So about half of you will prefer to turn off the grid. I'm going to turn it on. And I'm going to go, go to Tools Options. And I'm going to turn on those snaps. Yours are probably on. Okay, so I'm going to go to Dimension. So yours will most likely this snap is on to move dimensions. And also if we go over to Annotation, that's for Notes and turn on the snap and OK. So watch what happens with the snap currently on. Anytime I move a dimension, oh, actually the dimension is free to move. Maybe the snap is really small in size. So OK, this seems to be fine. Let's see when I move text. OK, there it is. That's what I wanted. I wanted you guys to see the snapping. See how it's snapping? I'm actually surprised it didn't snap on the dimension. Maybe when I create a new dimension. Let's see when I create a new dimension if it snaps. Okay, it doesn't seem to snap for dimensions. Okay, so I was wrong on that. But it does snap on text. So as I'm moving the text, it's snapping. So you can either turn off those snap options, which I mentioned earlier, or you can hold on to the shift key on the keyboard, and now I'm free to move. It's not snapping anymore. If I let go of the shift key, it snaps. I think with views it will not snap. Okay, with views it's okay. So that's another correction I have to make. With views it will not snap, but it will with text. And if you have tables, like a parts list table. All right, so... Let's go move on to the next one. Okay, I did show you how to add a frame. You can, you can also do it from up here. Again, on the previous slide, I show you how to add a frame or how to add symbols under Properties. You can always right-click Properties on the dimension or text to add frames around it or add symbols. You can also do it from here from these icons. Okay, so you do have the icons on top. Okay, so... If 
I click on text, you know what? I don't see it up here. I was expecting. I do see the symbols. If you want to add symbols, for example. Okay, so let's say uh, for this, I wanted to add a depth. Let me go ahead and make some room here. This is just way too tight. Okay, so let's say I wanted to add a depth symbol. Let's say the hole didn't go through. In this case, it does. Obviously, it goes all the way through. We can tell by the hidden lines. But let's say the hole doesn't go all the way through. We want it to add a depth. Okay, so uh, one thing, one way to do it is by just attaching text to this. Okay, so this is the easiest way is adding text. I can just add text to my dimension. Click on it so it'll link to it. So if this moves, the text will move with it. Okay, so you can see it's already adding text, giving me a preview. And from here, I can go to the drop down and say, hey, I want a depth. Okay, once again, if you want to add a symbol, click here and you can add depth, for example. Okay, so there's depth. I'm going to go space and let's say, uh, oh, it's clicked, space, and type in 0.5, for example, 0.5 inches. And OK, so that's one option. OK, so now uh, if I move this text, the, if I move the dimension, the text will move with it. OK, you can also align the text. If you don't like it where it's at, you can always, uh, oh, see how I'm snapping? Let me click the Shift key. If I want to center it more with the diameter 0.25, there it is. And then I can let go. Click in space to deselect, and now once again, if I move my dimension, the text will move with it. You can always break the link by right clicking, and you can delete the positional link. You can always delete, or you can always replace, or you can also create from here. Okay, so if it doesn't, if it fails to link to your dimension, you can always right click, and you can add or delete or replace a link. Okay, you can do it from here. All right. And again, if you wanted to add a frame, it doesn't give me the option from up here. I'm actually surprised I don't see it. Okay, so if you want to add, to add a frame around it for some reason, right-click, Properties. And you can add a rectangular frame, a circular frame from right here. Okay, go to the Text tab. I'm not going to do that, so I'll just go ahead and close this. All right, so... Let's talk about title block and border. Okay, so title block and border. Okay, so let's say we're ready ready to add a title block and border. Let me go ahead and uh, place these back in a dock toolbars, just like docking a boat or a ship. All right, so let's say we're ready to add a title block and border. So you're gonna go to edit, sheet background. You have to do it in the background. Katia will not allow you to generate a title block and border on the view space. So we have to go to the sheet background. As far as I know, there is no icon for sheet background. Okay, so go to edit sheet background and it'll turn gray. So now we are in the background. Okay, so this is where you add where you where you're going to add your title block and border. Okay, notice how the uh, notice how it added icons. So this is the title block and border or frame and title block. You can go to also go to insert, drawing, frame and title block. Here it will not allow me to add a, a second, third, my mistake, a third, fourth, or fifth sheet. You have to do it in, in, the, in the view space. So here in uh, the background space, you can add a, add a sheet, but you can add a title block and border. Okay, so click here, or you can also click on that icon. Now, uh, in our computer lab, I'm using my personal computer on this one. I'm using the student license. So maybe you're going to have the same issue, depending on when you downloaded Katia, if you downloaded all the documents. It looks like I didn't. I did not download the templates when I first downloaded Katia into my personal computer. Okay, so from the drop down here, you would have options. You would have different styles of title blocks and borders. Actually, Katia would give you three or four 
four different options. You click from the option and it will also uh, give you options to generate or delete a title block and border or modify or even if you change the sheet size, let's say we go from a B to an E size sheet size, you would do it from here, you would have it regenerate a larger title block and border. Okay, so let's go to the notes to show you what it looks like. So once again, again, you have to go to the sheet background and it's grayed out, or I should say it's gray, the background, to insert a title block and border. And this is what it would look like. Once you go into uh, insert title block and border, and once again, you cannot insert a sheet in background. You can only do it in the view, in the view area. Okay, so in sheet background, you'll be able to add a title block and border, and you can go to the drop down, and it'll give you a preview of what style of title block and border or frame it's going to give you. From here, you can generate, create the title block and border. You can delete, and you can resize it, right? You can resize it. If you change the sheet size, you can update. You can put a revision block on top, etc. So. If you're having the same issues I am with the title block and border, I'm going to go ahead and email you a title block and border. If you choose to leave it out, it's okay. I'm not going to take points off if you're not able to generate a title block and border, but I am going to email you one. Okay, so what I'm going to go ahead is open. Let me go ahead and close this. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and open my... Uh, template which I'm going to email you so I'm going to email you this katia.cat drawing with the title block and border so what I did is in the computer lab I generated my title block and border and I saved it as a katia file as a template okay so one thing I want you to notice I cannot grab the frame or border I cannot change the text and that's because I'm in the view area. If I want to go into the background, I need to go into the background, edit, sheet background. Now that I'm in the background, I can actually select the border if I want. I can also uh, change the text. You can see I can select items. If I wanted to change things in the title block, for example, here you would put your company name or your logo, right? You can change the text. Okay, so you can see, you can uh, change the drawing number. Notice that it automatically generates your projection style, or type, I should say, third angle projection. Here's my sheet size, D size. So I generated this a few days ago, and it also it recognizes the user of the computer, which is me, okay? All right, so what, I, what you can do is, if you want, you can create your drawing on this template or if you want to just copy it over I can go ahead and uh, window select control C to copy or right click copy right click copy and now I can go to your go to your drawing right you can go to your drawing drawing one and in the background here again you have you want to do this in the background I can now go control V or right click paste right click and paste and it should paste my title block and border now in this case the sheet size doesn't match this is a D so I'm gonna also create a B size so I can email it to you so I'll, I'll send you a B size and a D size but I just wanted to show you how you can copy and paste a title block and border from the one that I'm gonna from the template I'm gonna email you all right so let's go on to the next slide okay now we're gonna talk about bill of material bill of material it, it'll generate a parts list all right I'm going to go ahead and generate a bill of material there are two options there's the advance and the bill of material before I do that, let me window vertical, window vertical, and it's going to show me every single session I have open. Okay, so I have all this stuff open. Okay, I don't need my template anymore. Let me turn off the template or close it. 
I don't need this problem 229. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, it's like, are you sure? Hope I don't. And I don't want to save this. Oh, by the way, when I did a copy and paste, I unintentionally created a link between this drawing and the template that I just closed. So it's giving me a warning. And let me turn this off. All right, so let me backtrack to this title block and border. Okay, I don't want to save this new file. All right, so we go ahead and maximize the drawing. I can just double click on the frame and it'll maximize my window here. All right, so I'm going to delete this title block and border. Okay, let's see if I can still paste it. I should have right click paste special. Okay, so when I did a paste, I should have done paste special so it doesn't link it to the drawing template. Or else you may ha have issues later on when you submit your drawing for check and for approval through the system. So again, I have to right click paste special, my title block and border. If you do paste, it'll create a link between your drawing and the drawing template, which you do not want. It'll create uh, problems when you're ready to release the drawing through the, whether it's Team Center, Inovia, through the PLM system to release your drawing for approval, for documentation. All right, so let's generate a bill of material. Okay, so let me go ahead and hit Window Vertical. Now to generate a, a bill of material, I need to do it on an assembly. So let me go ahead and open up an assembly. You know what, I'll go ahead and open up the top clamp assembly. So bill of materials, typically you do it in a, on an assembly. So here's my assembly. Okay, and I'm gonna create a new drawing. go to file new and I'm gonna to go to drawing so if I was creating a drawing to, for this assembly okay I'll stick to a B size and let's say first I, I'll bring in a I'm gonna bring in my ISO, ISO view first okay so Let's create an ISO view. And let's go to the clamp assembly. So I'm creating a brand new drawing. All right, so first I position it. Okay, I like the position and click on a flat surface or plane generate the view okay and click on space to generate okay so let's say I'm ready to generate my bill of material you want to do it in the background edit sheet background okay so only in the sheet background can you generate a bill of material Okay, so let's generate a bill of material. Once you click on it, you're gonna wait and say, okay, uh, okay, yeah, I want a table. So it's just asking you what type of table you want. Okay, I'm good with this table. You can always invert so items are go uh, numerically upward, one, two, three, four, five, or downward, one, two, three, four, five, that's the invert. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and invert. So by inverting, it's going to list the items vertically upward as item one, two, three, and so on. 
Okay, and I'm going to hit OK. And then you're going to wait and see, okay, uh, where's my bill of material? Well, well you have to tell Katia what are you creating a bill of material of. So you have to go to your clamp assembly and click at the top of the tree. If you want to generate a bill of material for the entire clamp assembly, you have to click at the top. So you have to tell Katia, hey, I want a bill of material for that entire assembly. Okay, now it's going to ask me to position it. Where do you want it? Okay, I'll just click here in space, click, and it'll generate my bill of material. There it is. There's my bill of material for my clamp assembly. Okay. Now, one thing it doesn't generate is item one, two, three. It didn't generate uh, items. So, one thing I can do is double click. I can double click on the table. So this is similar to an Excel spreadsheet. Not as powerful as an Excel spreadsheet. It's a simple version of a spreadsheet. You can always change the size of your columns. As you can see, you have that option. You can also override the text. You can double click inside the box and type in your own text if you like. Okay, so you can overwrite the text here if you like. Okay, so one thing that is missing is a list of item, item one, two, three. You don't have to do this part, but I'm gonna show you how to do it anyway. So all I have to do is simply uh, right click on this column, right click, and I'm gonna insert a new column. Okay, I wanna insert a column. There it is, it inserts a new column. So I can here call it, okay, I need to add items. Item number. Now, one thing is, uh, anytime you do text, everything should be capital letters. I don't know why Katia is showing lowercase, but unfortunately, yeah, what I do, I just typically overwrite the text and do it in capital letters. All, the, all this lettering here should be capitalized if you're following the standards. Okay, then I would say, okay, then I'm going to call this item one. Okay, there it is, item one. And double click on the next one, call it item two. Unfortunately, you cannot generate a one, two, three, four, five in one shot like you do in Excel. This is very limited. I, have to, I would have to do it one at a time, item two, item three, and so on. I'm not going to do them all. just want to show you how to do it, and okay. All right, so, and you can also do an advanced one. I'm going to take a simple bill of material. Okay, you can also do a regular bill. So the first one we did was an advanced. Would go back to your 3D model. You have to tell Katia what you are going to uh, link your bill of material to, in this case, the top clamp assembly. On our assignment video, I'll be doing it for the motor base assembly. Okay, then you have to click where you want it, click. And this, it'll give you a more complete bill of material. Oh, let me move this one downward. Notice I have a snap to grid option on. I can always hit the shift, car, the shift key so I can freely move it. So this was the first bill of material I generated. This is the second one. Okay. All right. Let's move on to the next slide. Okay, you can also insert your own table. If you wanted to do your own bill of material manually, you can either overwrite the one that you that we just generated, or you can do it from scratch. You can also insert text if you like. And there's a big difference when you do an enter in text versus control enter. One of them will just skip to the next line. Another one will exit. Okay, so if you want to do your own table, here it is, table. Okay, how many rows, how many columns, and then hit OK, and then click where you want to generate it. Click where you want that table, there it is. And once again, you can always move it, and you can manually type in your text into each cell. Okay, or again, once again, you can always override any text in the generated table 
using the bill of material like uh, command you can always overwrite okay all right and you can also add text and again all this is going in the background okay so if you uh, do text all this is going to be in the background okay so when you add text and you're ready to exit if I hit enter it'll exit the command but if I wanted to add more lines, let's go back and double click on that text to go back into it and alter it. If you wanted to add another row of text, you have to hold on to the control key, enter, and it'll take me down to another line. Type in text, control key, enter to add more text and so on. And once you're ready to exit, you can hit OK or just hit enter on the keyboard. Okay, obviously, all this would have to fit inside my title block and border. Right. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and uh, make this sheet size. I'll make it into a... Oh, by the way, I can't not change the sheet size here unless I do it in the view section. Okay, so let me go ahead, go ahead and add my title block and border one more time. So I'll open up my template. And I'm going to go into the background, edit sheet background. So I think most of you will use its D size, but I will also send you a B size. So let's go ahead and copy this. I'm already in the background. Okay, right click copy. And I'm gonna paste it into my new drawing. Okay, so again, we wanna paste our title block and border in the background. So I'm gonna go right click, paste special. That way it doesn't link it to my template. Okay. Okay, now I don't need all this uh, bill of material information, so I'm gonna delete some of it. I'm gonna delete it. I'm gonna delete this table. And I'll move my bill of material over here to the right. Typically you place it here, or you can put it at one of the corners. Okay, if you were to place it up here, then you want to invert it so that the item numbers will be going one, two, three, four downward, or actually you want them to go inward. If you place it here, again, one, two, three, going inward and not outward. All right, so now let's go to, back to the working view layer. So go back to working view. Okay, now I can change my sheet size. Okay, I'm gonna go from a B to a D size. So right click properties and I'll change my sheet size to a D. And OK. And there it is. It fits it. And there's my assembly. OK, I forgot to uh, delete this text. You would have to go into the background. Notice how I cannot grab the text here, this extra text that I did for fun. I can, uh, I can delete it, but I have to go into the sheet background. All right, let's move on. We're almost coming to an end here. Okay, so uh, modify links. You can link to certain items on your drawing. You don't need to link to the entire assembly. Sometimes you just want to bring some of the items in. Okay, so let's say I wanted to make a drawing of just the strap. So I'm going to go ahead and insert a new sheet. insert a new sheet and it should copy everything over from the previous page now I don't need the bill of material you know the text you don't need, you don't want to uh, keep including the bill of material on each page you just include it at the very beginning sheet one so I'm gonna have to go into the sheet background and delete so it just automatically brought everything over from the background of sheet one and we don't need to duplicate bill of materials Again, you're not going to have this issue once you're working for a company. All this will be set up for you. They'll give you a drawing template to follow. Okay, let's go back to working view. Okay, so let's say I wanted to create a detailed drawing of the strap now on sheet number two. Okay, so let's go ahead and then we'll talk about modify links. 
Okay, so let me first create my detailed drawing of the clamp strap and only the clamp strap. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and create. Let me first create an ISO view, isometric view. Go to my clamp assembly. Now, one thing you don't want to do is open the clamp strap in its own window. You want to go to the assembly. You want your drawing linked to the entire assembly. You do not want to open this on its own window. Okay, so what you're going to do is select the clamp strap from the tree. Select it. So this is the only thing it's going to bring in to our drawing. And then click on a flat surface or a plane to generate the view. So even though we went to our uh, clamp assembly, we only brought in the strap and click to generate the view. Okay, let's say you made a mistake and they said, oh, you know what? I meant to only grab the hook. Okay, so instead of the strap, let's say you wanted to do the hook. Hey, you can go to right click properties. Let me first show you the slide. If you wanted to relink it to something else, you right click properties on the view frame, go to modify links, and you can relink it to something new. Okay, so let's say you made a mistake and wanted to link to the hook instead. Right click, go to uh, modify links. So we're going to modify the link to this view frame. Notice currently it has the clamp strap. I said preview. Currently it's linked to the clamp strap. But say, hey, no, I want to add something else. So I can click here in this box. Three, two, one. Click in this box. And nothing happens. Katia is waiting for you to go and pick it from the 3D model, the clamp assembly. Okay, let's say I wanted just a hook, the clamp hook here. Then let me go ahead and uh, believe it's in this one, the end assembly and pick it. There it is, the hook clamp. The hook clamp selected. Go back to your drawing. Okay, and there it is. It's on my list now. Okay, so now I select it. Well, actually, I can select and add it to my linked window. So I'm going to say, hey, add all of them. So it'll add this hook clamp onto the list. Add all. Watch how it moves up. There it is. Notice it's in the preview here. It's showing, it's showing me the, the hook clamp. And hit OK. And then you have to update. Okay, so you can right click update or hit the swirl icon to update the update button. You could also done the update button. Say, oh, there it is. Oh, I forgot to unlink the clamp strap. So let's go back. Okay, so let's say you meant to only do the hook clamp and forgot to remove the clamp strap. We can go back, right click properties and go to modify links. And once you're in modify links, you can say clamp strap, remove. It's going to remove it. So it's giving me a warning that it may change the orientation of our view because we used the plane from the clamp strap to generate the view. So it's giving me a warning. Okay. Hopefully it doesn't uh, change the orientation. And okay. And update. It actually did change the orientation. So because the first time we went off of the orientation with respect to the clamp strap, it did change the orientation. Let's say you didn't like this orientation. Let's say you wanted to change it. Like, oh, I don't like this orientation. I want it to look similar to the handout. All right, you can right click. Oh, I don't know what I did there. I think I deleted by mistake. Undo, Control Z, undo. I think I mistakenly right clicked and deleted by mistake. Yeah, I accidentally cut it or deleted. it. Okay, we're back. Okay, so let's say we wanted to change the projection. So we can say modify projection plane. We can go back. Okay, go to the 3D model. 
And this time, instead of using a, a clamp strap to project off of, I'm going to use a flat surface on the clamp strap or the my mistake, hook clamp. There it is. So now I'm changing the orientation. Okay, so you can do that. So if you make a mistake, have the wrong orientation. There it is. And click in space to regenerate. All right, that's modify links. You'd be surprised how many uh, Katia designers are not aware of modify links. Okay, we're almost coming to an end here. Okay, overload properties. Sometimes you want to change something to a phantom line because maybe it's not part of the final drawing, but it's something that uh, just displays how the part is used. You can overload properties. Let's go back to sheet one. Let's say, for example, the knob was not part of the final assembly, but let's say you wanted that knob as a reference, maybe on the next assembly level, on the next drawing, higher assembly level, you were going to add the knob, for example. But you wanted to show that a knob goes there, so you would have to bring it in as a phantom. So we can right click and we can overload properties. Okay, so overload properties. This is common in a when you want to show how the part is used. Okay, so let's say this will not be shown until the next higher assembly drawing. So I can click on this item and say, hey, I want to edit this. I want to edit. And instead of solid lines, I want to use phantom lines. Okay, so I'll keep the solid lines at two. Actually, you know what? I'm going to make them thinner at one. And I'll change it from a solid line, continuous line, to a Phantom line. Uh, let's see. I think this is the phantom line. And OK. And apply in 3, 2, 1, apply. And it changes it to a phantom. As you can see. OK. So you can overload properties. You can always undo it. You can always reset. So you you can always go back and reset it. Select it from the list. So you can do multiple items here if you like. We only have one. You can always reset the properties and apply, and it'll reset it back to the original. Okay, so that is overload properties. Comes in handy sometimes when you're dealing with complex assemblies, and you wanna at least give a preview of what's gonna look like on the next higher assembly drawing. Okay, and finally, uh, I'm gonna show you how to create a scene. And I'm going to walk you through this in the video of the motor base assembly drawing. Okay, so how to create a scene. So we're going to look for the scenes toolbar in the assembly workbench. Okay, so let's say we wanted to do an exploded view, similar to what you're going to do on your assignment. Okay, so how do we create an exploded view? I'll do it on the clamp strap, and on the assignment video, I'll do it to the motor base assembly. All right, so let's say we wanted to do an exploded view. Okay, so first we need to go to the 3D model. In this case, the clamp assembly. By the way, uh, if you want to do the drawing of the clamp assembly, you may, except you're going to get less points. So uh, the drafting assignment is worth 200 points if you do the motor base assembly. But if you want to do the clamp strap assembly as you're drawing, there's a lot less items. So the max I'll give you is 150 points. So most of you will do the motor base, but some of you that are stressed for time, running out of time, will do the clamp strap assembly just to get enough points to uh, get the next grade higher, an A or a B in the class. All right, so let's do an exploded view. So here is the scenes toolbar. If you don't see the scenes toolbar, chances are it's buried down here somewhere in the corner. Okay, so you have to be in the assembly workbench. If you're not, go to start. First, double click at the very top of the tree. Double click at the top of the tree. Clamp assembly, top clamp assembly. Go to start and make sure you are in the assembly design workbench. We are already in it. If not, 
click here and it'll take you to the assembly workbench and chances are you're gonna have to dig out the scenes toolbar okay so if there's a toolbar that's missing you don't see it you're not supposed to be there you can always drag it here by grabbing that handle left mouse click hold and drag okay you can keep dragging a uh, toolbars are out there it is or you can always double click and it'll send them back into, into place if you don't see a toolbar, you're looking for, for example, the manipulate or the move uh, toolbar and you don't see it, let's say you accidentally turned it off, you can always right click on any icon and bring back that toolbar, in this case the move, okay. Alright, so here are scenes. So to create a scene, think of a movie scene. Okay, so click on the scene and the background will turn green. I'll have it automatically give it a name. It'll call it scene one. If you want to give it your own name, like exploded view, turn this off and type in exploded view. I'll just have it auto name it scene number one and okay. So the background is going to turn green and then on the tree, it's going to add my scene. So currently we are in scene one. Scenes, you have freedom to do whatever you want. You can move things using the compass or the move if you want. You can use uh, the move icons to move things around and feel free to move things. So here you're going to move one thing at a time or multiple things at a time by holding on to the control key. So you want to do an exploded view so it's easier to see all the items that make up this assembly. Okay, exploded views is to show all the little hardware that sometimes is buried in the parts and they're hard to see. Okay, so this is the reason for exploded views. Now, since this scene, actually let me uh, rephrase that. Now, even though we have constraints on these parts, you're probably wondering, oh, I'm gonna mess up the constraints if I move things. Actually, in scenes, you can do whatever you want and, the, and it's not going to affect your constraints or your assembly. You have a lot of freedom to just move things around freely and it's not going to affect your assembly okay okay once you're done exploding things and once you're done uh position the orientation you want if you want this orientation for your exploded view okay then you can exit just like exiting a sketch okay so you can exit and you'll see that we'll be back to our clamp assembly just the way we had it originally so your scene does not affect your constraints or the location of the parts don't forget to reset your compass view reset compass okay so now and again on the next video I'll show you how to create a scene on the motor base assembly and I'll move things around okay so now when you're ready to create a drawing of the scene of the exploded view go to your drawing and just to save time I'm gonna do the exploded view on sheet one along with the uh, sem the along with this ISO view the assembly view I'll just move this over okay so I'm gonna create a new ISO view of the exploded view go to ISO and then go to your 3D model, clamp assembly, and click on the scene on the tree, scene one. Click on it, so it's going to bring in the exploded view, scene one. Click on it, and then click any flat surface or plane, and it's going to bring in the exploded view, our scene one. All right, so if you like the orientation, click in space and it'll generate you can always go back into scene one you can always double click scene one you can always go back to scene one and move things around and your drawing will update okay so keep that in mind sometimes you didn't like the way it came out in your drawing you can always go back to scene one and you can move things around I don't know let's say you want this uh, bushing on the other side along with the with the hook clamp. Okay, so I'm going to hold on to the control key and select both the hook clamp and the bushing. And then I'll just drag it with the 
compass. Okay, I'm good. Exit the sketch, and it'll update the drawing. First, don't forget to uh, reset your compass. View, reset compass. Go back to your drawing, and it's going to want to update. Okay, so hit the uh, update icon, or you can right click on that view. Notice the swirls, it's letting me know it wants to update and update, and you'll see these items move over to the other side. It recognized there was a change, and there it is. Okay, so you can update your scene. Okay, and finally, for the drawing, once you're done, don't forget to save your drawing and also your uh, your scene. So you gotta go File, Save Management. First, let me uh, yeah, let's go ahead go ahead and go to File, Save Management. I was gonna close the other windows of the other items. Okay, so uh, here we have our new drawing. Make sure you save it in the same folder as your clamp assembly. So once again, here we have our drawing three. And you may want to give it a new name, so it'll go save as. Okay, and I'm going to give it a new name. I'll call it the clamp assembly. And you want to save it in the same folder as your clamp assembly. So go to your folder where you have your clamp assembly. And you want to save it in that folder. Okay. Even though I hit save, you still have to hit OK here before it saves it. And you can see here, my drawing now is called Clamp Assembly Drawing. You can see it here. And it's going to save it in the same folder. Now we modified the top clamp assembly. If you click on it, here's your clamp assembly. We added the scene, so it's been modified to, you also have to save that. Okay, so you would have to hit save. And it'll save it, you can see. And once you hit OK, It'll save everything into your folder. Okay. And finally, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, exit this. And last thing, when you uh, want to convert a drawing to a PDF file, which is very common, right? So let's say I wanted to take this drawing and convert it to a PDF file. All you simply have to do is go to File. So once you saved your drawing, your Katia drawing, and now you want to save a PDF file, go to File, Save As, File, Save As, and you have options here. Go to the drop down here, you have options. You can save it as a JPEG, you can save it as a .dxf file, so you can open it up in AutoCAD. You can save it as a PDF. Go to PDF, and give it its name, and you can save it as a PDF file. Okay, once you hit save, it'll generate the PDF file. So one thing that I do want you to be aware of is, to end this, is if you have eight sheets, for example, most likely you'll have eight sheets for your motor base assembly, it's going to generate eight separate PDF files. And I know most of you are going to want to put this all into one PDF file instead of a PDF file for each sheet. Okay, so if you have eight sheets, it'll create eight PDFs, a PDF for each sheet. If you want to combine it all into one, you have to change your settings. You have to go to Tools Options, go to General, go to Compatibility, look for the Graphics Format tab, and click the option Save Multi-Sheet as a Single Vectorial File. Turn on this option. And instead of having all these PDF files, it'll save it all into one. Okay, so just turn this on as shown here. Okay, so this is the end of the drafting lecture. And you'll have a second video showing how to do the drawing of the motor base assembly. It'll be a summarized version. I'm not going to do a full-on drawing for the motor base assembly. I'll just walk you through uh, some of the main commands and that you uh, finish the drawing on your own. End of lecture.